Cinemoi presents Supermodels du Monde, the ultimate supermodel series. We're counting down a hundred extraordinary catwalkers from every corner of the planet, from the land down under to the Far East. We're ranking each region's most stunning strutters. Get to know Dorothea. You always have to kind of look uh, good, or, you know, even if you're just slept two hours. Hannah. I'm from Sweden, and my family think it's good for me. They just want me to have fun. Caroline. The best part, I think, is that you get to travel, you get to meet a lot of people. Suvi. We had this TV show in Finland that I went to, and that's how I got into the business. Sarah. I just came from Chanel this morning. Chanel was amazing. There were 90 girls, which is a lot of girls. A lot of work for the hair and makeup. Helena. I think that was a very special moment, and I'm really proud to have you know been part of it. Siri. I've always had like what I wanted to do. I want to be a physiotherapist. So I'm going to do that after I finish modeling. And Rita. And I was like, oh my god, is this for real? Like, people want my autograph? Watch and find out which of these eight Scandinavian stunners is number one on our list. And to kick off the countdown, at number eight, it's Hannah. I'm Hannah Rundlof. While many models are scouted on the streets, Hannah got her big break on the information superhighway. I was discovered on the internet and I was 14 years old. There was an advertising thing for Elite Model Look and I was sending pictures for fun with my friend and <laughs> like I didn't think that it, they were gonna call me but they did so yeah. I was shocked because I was shorter then and I didn't like thought I could be a model. And my first job was in Tokyo. That's where I started. The shows are the best because you're always very excited and when you go out there you feel so powerful, so fun. With a demanding career and an unpredictable schedule, Hannah appreciates her precious downtime. After fashion season, the Nordic beauty likes to kick back and relax at home with her family. I'm from Sweden and my family think it's good for me, they just want me to have fun. I just finished high school now in June, so I still live with my parents, but I'm gonna move soon, I think. So we'll see in the future what happens. Yeah, I think I will go to college, like later when I know really what I want to do after modeling. With miles of runway behind her and many more promising fashion seasons in her future, Hannah is living in the moment and enjoying every second of her modeling career. She shared a few highlights. I think the D&G campaign was the best one. I had a lot of very fun and great experiences. Like going to Shanghai and do the Chanel show was really fun. Yeah, the shows and everything. And what does this model sensation like most about working in the fashion industry? I love that you can express yourself with the clothes and everything, and it's like art to me. At number seven, it's Swedish beauty, Dorothea. A routine shopping trip became a life-changing experience for Dorothea, who went from buying clothes to modeling them. I was in, uh, at HM in, in Sweden, in Stockholm, and uh, it was a girl who came, uh, came to me and was like, oh, are you a model? Do you want to try to or come up to our office and we take some pictures and see? So that, that's how it went. I didn't really know what modeling was before because I've been interested in clothes and stuff, but I never thought I could do it, you know? And I thought it was a good idea. Modeling for me is kind of acting stuff, and I went to acting high school. So I'm really into theater. It's a lot to handle, and it's a lot to like 
you get so much insp inspiration and sometimes it's get too much but that's the good things The bad things is uh, it's uh, really stressful, um, not so much sleep, and you always have to kind of look uh, good. Or you know, even if you're just slept two hours, you have to be on top and like be glad, have um, energy. Try to cooperate with the people you are working with. So, and that's sometimes hard when it's like. Uh, same day after day. I would like to sew and remake my clothes and stuff and also I'm kind of, I like, like everything artistic, like painting and um, also theatre, acting and that kind of stuff. Thanks to her acting background, Dorothea has been able to showcase her talent in a new way, especially through one designer. Oh, uh, Sonia Riquel, I think. They really try to get the girl to get out their personalities. Right now, I feel like it's such a hard uh, work, and because every day you have to be, you can't really have bad days in acting. And I don't know if I can handle that, but it's my dream, so we'll see. At number six on our countdown, get to know Sarah. Hi, my name is Sarah Blomqvist. I'm 21 years old from Sweden. I've been modeling about three years now, two years full time. We caught up with Sarah in Paris, where even at the end of a hectic month of shows, the runway star continued to bring energy to the catwalk. Modeling in Paris is different in a way that uh, you've been doing three weeks already, so everyone's a little bit tired. It's always a bit more makeup, a bit more couture, um, but it's also a lot of fun, you know? It's, it's fun when you bring on a little bit more and everything. My favorite part of modeling would be all the traveling, and especially with the shows, you get to see all your friends again. It's nice with the mix-up from doing um, all the photo shoots. Then you get to see your friends and you get to do those amazing shows. Sarah has walked the runway for some of the world's most venerable designers, and she shared with us her personal favorites. I just came from Chanel this morning. Chanel was amazing. There were 90 girls, which is a lot of girls, a lot of work for the hair and makeup. Um, I don't know, I don't know how Carl makes it, just every time it's something new, something fresh, and everyone's just stunned by the whole view of it. Today we're at Valentino, and we haven't gotten our directions yet, but I'm sure like the Valentino woman is very strong, she's also very sexy, so I'm sure we're gonna, as you can see, our makeup and hair is very feminine, so I'm sure we're gonna give it a strong walk, but still with that femininity and proudness. The clothes are just magnificent. After weeks of early morning call times and long work days in every major fashion capital, Sarah looks forward to a little R&R &R away from the cameras and chaos. After Paris and all the shows, I'm actually not going to go straight home. I have to work for a couple of days here in Paris and then I might go to London um, to see my boyfriend. Landing at number five, it's Finland's finest, Suvi. I never wanted to be a model. It just kind of came to me, so now it's working. What can I say? Suvi doesn't have to say a word. 
the Finnish model's roster of top-tier fashion clients speaks for itself. While she takes her career very seriously, Suvi finds her path to modeling rather humorous. The whole me getting into the industry was kind of funny. We had this TV show in Finland that I went to and that's how I got into the business. It wasn't something I wanted to do. I always wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever else, but I never even thought about it. That was just something I wanted to do because it's uh, good money. But now I'm doing money doing something that's much more fun, so it works for me. At first it's really overwhelming, but once you get used to it, you start liking it and you meet new people all the time and I just love being with people. It's a great experience, you get to travel, you get to do cool stuff that other teenagers can't do, so I think they just think it's a great opportunity for me. I have a sister and brother, and they're younger, but I don't know what they really think about modeling. I don't know if they know what it's really like, but I don't see them that often, that sucks, but what can you do? I love Finland, and it's not a huge city, it's really safe, and the you have four seasons, and it's just people are nice. It was really nice environment to grow up. I don't really have hobbies, but I just do different stuff with my friends, so nothing special, just hanging out. Right now I'm just taking it one day at a time. You never know how long modeling is going to last, so you need to be happy while it's going well. Suvi has miles of runway behind her, but the humble beauty still gets excited for a big show. Usually you always get kind of nervous, just like when the music starts, you suddenly get this huge, like, you just want to go out there. Everyone's looking at you, what else can you ask for? Coming in at number four, it's bubbly beauty, Frida. Racking up 60 runway shows in her first season alone, Frida Gustafsson continues to be a must-have model for top designers. When I started, like my first show in New York, people were like, hmm, it's your name. And now it's, it's like so crazy that people know your name, but you don't know them. I went out of um, Dior um, after the Dior show and I had there was like so many Japanese, like small Japanese Asian girls who were like, oh, Frida, 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 hi! And I was just like, ah, oh, hi! Because, you know, and they were like, they had pictures of me and they were like, oh, can I have your autograph? And I was like, oh my God, is this for real? Like, people want my autograph? Yeah, so for a season and it's been massive. It's been so much fun. It's just crazy. I made so many good friends, and but it's been tough as well. It's been long hours, fittings at 4 a.m., like crazy early call times, and just rush, rush, rush everywhere. But it's it's been so much fun, so it's completely worth it. How I started? I was scouted in Sweden when I was about 14, so I joined my mother agency and. I worked a little bit in Sweden, I went to Tokyo, and then first time I did some serious traveling, I went to Paris the summers. And it went well, and it was a lot of fun. When I'm not model, um, I try to do as much sports as possible. I'm a really sporty person. And just be with my family, my friends, and. I sew a lot, I study fashion design, so yeah, I sew a lot. Try to do something creative, like make some things and not just be like sit at home in front of a computer, which I do a lot, because I'm a geek. I play a lot of like computer games and like TV games and so much fun. I'm very interested in like TV games and stuff like that. I 
know for sure that I want to do something that I feel happy with and that I can go to job every day and I feel like that I can stand for what I'm doing and I do something which I feel has the meaning of it. It doesn't matter like if I for myself just sit in the basement and make clothes but if, as long as I'm happy that, that then that's what I want to do. I feel really glad you know for the opportunity I've been given to to do something like this because I think in the long run it's you you grow very much as a person. You get a lot of nice experiences. Hailing from Norway, at number three, it's Siri. Hi, I'm Siri Talrad. When I was 16, I started went shopping for Christmas gifts at the local mall, and there was a scout there, and. Yeah, I was discovered in home in Norway, in Christiansen. The first thing she asked was like, how tall are you? I'm like, mm, I don't know, like 177 or something. And she said, okay, cool. And she introduced herself as a model scout from Milan. I've never like thought that I'm gonna be a model or anything, but when it was there, I was thinking, sure, why not? I'll give it a try and see how it goes. If I like it, I'll continue, if not, I'll go back home. <laughs> I like it, I really do. It's exciting, it's always new people, new, it's a lot of traveling. You get to learn languages and cultures and yeah, people, friends, new friends from all over the world. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm taking one day at a time and yeah, just see what happens. I have a sister and my parents and her, they're all like exciting and so proud and calling me all the time and like, oh, I just saw this picture of you in style.com, amazing. I like to be outdoors and do like activities like that. From home in Norway, I'll go skiing during winter. Uh, I like horseback riding and go fishing uh, in the summer. Take my boat and go out fishing and yeah, it's nice. I've always had like what I wanted to do. I want to be a physiotherapist. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that after I finish modeling. But now I'm taking a year off after high school and to do this and see how it goes. I can go back to the schools afterwards or, yeah. Three years after we first met Siri, we caught up with her again backstage at Alexander McQueen. The catwalk star was still at the top of her game. Fashion Week gets easier by the seasons because then you don't have to do every single show anymore. You get to know the business more and you get to know the people so you're more comfortable being there and you learn some tricks there and there. Well, it's the last day tomorrow. I'm kind of happy about that. I've enjoyed myself this season. It's been a good season. So I'm happy, yeah. Landing at number two on the countdown, get to know Caroline. My name is Caroline and I'm from Sweden. <laughs> I've been doing this, I think it's like my fifth or sixth season. Yeah, so it's a while now, I'm feeling, starting to feel old. <laughs> then only 21 years of age, Caroline Winberg could hardly be considered old. Rumor has it, at age 17, this five foot 11 inch blonde was harassed by a slew of phone calls from a then 59 year old Mick Jagger, after he caught a glimpse of her on the runway. Scandals aside, this sexy Swede has established herself as one of the top models working today. I like it. I mean, now when, after doing it for a while, you know everyone and everyone is your friend, so it's much easier than in the beginning when you sit in the corner and no one speaks to you. <laughs> I'm more confident. I'm not scared. If I fall, I fall. I, it doesn't matter. Or If I'm late, I'm late. It's not like it's, the world goes under. So. No, so yeah, everything feels so much better now. The best part, I think, is that you get to travel, you get to meet a lot of people, you get to make money when you're still at a young age, so then you can do what you want when you get older. Me? I mean, probably I'm gonna go back to school somewhere. I don't know if I'm gonna go back to school in Sweden or here in America. 
shows are very stressful. I mean, if it's just would be one show, but it's a lot of shows every day, and not just fo shows, it's fittings, it's castings, it's the whole thing going on. It's just bad for the skin to put so much hair and makeup, and my hair is gonna break, and I'm gonna have pimples in the end of the week. So I would just wish you could be without makeup, it would be better. <laughs> I prefer to do editorial. Editorial is like you go there, you work the whole day, you go home. And here it's like it feels like it's never ending. <laughs> no, I have a lot of designers that I like. It's all diff like a mix of everyone. I think it's better. I like Chanel, Karl Lagerfeld, all the things he does. So I like to wear everything that's comfortable. <laughs> I don't would we'll never wear something that I don't think it's comfortable or that I don't think that I look good at. What advice does Caroline offer young women with modeling ambitions? I just think they should like not be so like think it's the biggest thing in their life. They should just kind of take it a bit easy because other, otherwise you won't have fun with it. And finally, number one on our list, Danish doll Helena. I think that was a very special moment and I'm really proud to have, you know, been part of it. In the new millennium, Helena Christensen has worked as a photographer, designer, boutique owner and creative director. But in the 1990s, this voluptuous vixen ruled the runways. I actually never even I realized that there was a, a fashion world existing. And to tell you the truth, I had no idea. I never looked in fashion magazines. I was back home in Denmark playing with, you know, my Legos. The way a supermodel life has been, you know, treated in the press, I, I believe that it becomes a dream for a lot of people, but it's just not the way it is. It's a great job and I'm very happy and proud of that I'm able to have done it. It's just a shame that it's not really like that. It becomes a bit of a routine, you know, to walk up and down that runway for like three weeks a month. I think Helena is remarkable for the fact that it's a woman. You never looked at Helena Christensen and said, oh, she's a pretty girl. You say, oh, what a great looking woman. Helena can put on a trench coat and a pair of pants and still look like a remarkably sexy woman. I don't ever think this is going to be girls lasting for this long. I think that everyone is craving new faces, new bodies. And that's just the way the business is. It's all about changing, changing all the time. So sticking around for 10 years is, you know, pretty good.